sitting here, all of a sudden, like the passion of the Lord just came over me. You know, when David was bringing the ark back, there was a wild and crazy praise that erupted from him. Can you imagine? The enemy had taken the ark where the very presence of God dwelt. Do you know, today, you are that ark where his presence dwells. But as David was spinning wildly, very undignified, <laughs> not an ounce of religion there, Michal, his wife, in pride, was very embarrassed. And that caused her to enter into barrenness and rejection. But what I feel the Spirit of the Lord is saying is if we would just humble ourselves and say, God, forgive me for every place where when I didn't understand why someone would respond in the way they did, break the barrenness off of my life. And Lord, even if I can't do it on the inside, on the outside, let me do it on the inside. Let me have a wild and crazy praise on the inside of me that gives you every bit of my heart, that spins in glory and delight. Lord, if my physical body can't do it, or my nature just can't step out that way, God, help me to do it on the inside. Let the inside of me shift and move every part of me, body, soul, and spirit. Because let me tell you, Jesus said, the one who is forgiven much loves much. And there's a spirit of repentance coming into this region that is going to deliver this region from pride and the shutting down of the spirit of the Lord. Because the spirit of the Lord is kissing you this morning. But he's not just kissing you. I see him going throughout this region wanting to kiss his people and to awaken churches and to bring forth his move. But he comes and we don't let him in when he starts to move. We just got to move on with whatever we're doing. But God does like to shift our programs. God likes to disrupt and interrupt. And his divine order is better than our order. And so, Lord, I just say, put a wild and crazy praise on the inside of us. And, Lord, let it break us out of every box and limitation. And let it release the healing oil of glory that's been stopped up in this land. Oh, Lord God, there's been triples, trickles of it. But, God, there's a flow because there's oil of the Spirit that's desiring to come forth from the well of salvation. And the well of salvation is opening up. And as the well of salvation opens up, people are going to be healed, saved, and delivered. And they're going to call upon the name of the Lord. And entire households are going to come to Him. And God is going to do something astounding. But if you sit in doubt, and if you scorn, you won't get to enter in because you would have shut yourself off. God wants all of us to enter in. There's an oil that he wants to release to flow. So, Lord, we give you our crazy praise. Lord, we just, we spin. Your word says you're spinning in delight over us. And, Lord God, our brother was even singing about the spinning. And then as the whole team entered into this place, Lord God, you took us into the place where praise is the breakthrough, where praise is the breakthrough, where praise is the breakthrough, where praise is the breakthrough. And greater is he who breaks through in us than what would try to resist and stand against us. So, Lord, we thank you that you are Baal, that you are the God of the breakthrough. You are God of the breakthrough and you are casting down every ball that's raised up against us. And Lord God, you are fighting for us in the midst of our praise. You are fighting for us in the midst of our praise. As a stealth attack and now she's just in the open attacking. So, And we just really appreciate what God does through 
Tracy Ann. Amen. She was with Tom Ledbetter yesterday and doing some powerful, powerful stuff. And uh, we knew when she came before um, that this would be a double header and that there would be a moment when the Lord would bring her back. And, uh, and this is that assignment. And so this is a very, very strategic moment that we're in. So pay attention to what she says. And if you were here this morning when we were praying, man, she just came with a big stick. Amen. And a lot of other stuff too. So let's welcome Tracy Ann Loosely. Amen. So I'm getting all mantled here, okay? Yeah. So they're like, what is she doing? I'm listening to the Lord. There's prophetic acts that God will have us do. Father, I thank you that you are about to do something that only you can do. And God, that your angels and warriors are here. Father, I thank you that we step into a new level. It's all about the greater ones that are coming with us. Father, the enemy would try to intimidate us, but you want us to remember that when you say, higher in you, you release all the help we need in you. And so, Father, I know you're going to dismantle strategies of the enemy. And I know, Lord God, that the power of God is available to heal, to save, and deliver. And so, Father, I release the power of the total nucleus transformation anointing of the Holy Ghost, TNT, total nucleus transformation anointing, the dynamite, explosive power of the Holy Ghost to bring in the angelic and to scatter the enemy. And, Father, to route out those places that have kept us from being totally victorious in you. So, Father, I thank you that we live in the love zone, the no fear zone, the love zone of God, the no fear zone. And I put that in the spirit over this house. This is the love zone where Jehovah Ahava, God who is love, rules and reigns. It's the no fear zone. It's the intrepid warrior house. Lord God, I thank you that you are moving in a mighty and a powerful way and that the blood of Jesus is over every doorpost, over every window. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that the man of war is fighting on our behalf. And Father, I thank you for the angel of the Lord that goes before. (laughs) I thank you for that mighty warrior, Lord, that goes before. And I thank you, Lord God, that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper, not one. And every tongue that rises up to accuse us, we condemn, for this is our heritage (laughs) as servants of the Lord, for our righteousness is of God. So, Lord, we stand in that place in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to decree a decree here about the blood of Jesus. This is why we tried to hook me up to that power, but I I, I felt like when I took it off, the Lord was saying, I'm disconnecting you from one power source to connect you to another. See, the Lord, I heard that the power went out last night. I don't know if it went out where I was at because I was sound asleep. (laughs) I'm like, not taking my rest. (laughs) I'm just, thank you, Jesus. It's time to go to sleep. Pray when you're supposed to pray. Sleep when you're supposed to sleep. (laughs) But I really feel like the Lord is wanting to remind you that the enemy cannot take the power of God from you. Okay? You've got the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is the most powerful weapon. The blood of Jesus has given us victory. You see, I want to read to you um, some things that between reading all these different books on the blood years ago and, and studying the blood and the word, the Lord is just really placed a a thing in me that I've got to honor the blood everywhere I go. And when I honor the blood and apply the blood, then the the enemy has to scatter because even in the Old Testament, they took the hyssop and the hyssop had a cleansing power, but they dipped it in the blood, which had a saving power. And the blood of Jesus cleanses, saves, heals, delivers. And they put the blood of the Passover lamb over the doorpost and on the lintels to cause the spirit of death and destruction to go by. Are you applying the blood over every part of your life? Are you putting that blood over your doorpost? Are you, re- are you reminding the Father, the blood, the blood? I plead the blood. 
The greatest place when the enemy comes accusing is just to say, I plead the blood. Because no accusation can stand against the power of the blood. You see, humility is a posture. The Lord said that today he was establishing the love zone, the no fear zone. And he said, love is a posture of humility. And humility is going to dismantle Leviathan. You see, these symptoms are the spirit of Leviathan. And Leviathan is a twisted serpent. The only thing that overcomes Leviathan is the place of humility. And as the body, it is our place to go low and to humble ourselves and to pray for our leaders. It's that's our position. Yes, there's other war things warring, but you know what? They're afraid. We don't even have to name them. Because they know God's already dealt with them and they cannot be here. And though they try to come with a night tear, they cannot. Psalm 91 is where you're hidden. They cannot. It's illegal. He will try, but he cannot. You see, pride comes before the fall. And God is saying, there can be no root of pride in you if you agree with the enemy in any place. And if you think in your thoughts or your prayers that something that happens to someone, there must be an open door or something. You just stepped into pride and opened a door yourself. You see, because this is illegal. Absolutely illegal. Absolutely illegal. And it's because of the greater level of the prophetic that you're coming into. And the enemy fears the prophetic because the prophet will give the intercessors the intel that the intercessors need to pray. But that prophet, if that prophet isn't praying also, that prophet should be dismantled for a moment until they can learn to pray again. Because if a prophet's not a praying prophet and he's only a prophet for profit, then he is a false prophet. And God is dealing with those issues in our hearts. Because if we only want to function in a five-fold ministry so we can have a paycheck, we do not have the heart of God. It's a calling of God to serve his people. Now, in Ephesians 3, it talks about how we speak to the powers and principalities. So some of the things I'm speaking are not to you. It's to things that have been operating in the atmosphere. So I don't want you to get to allow offense to come in in any way, okay? You need to understand, I know when the Lord speaks and when he tells me to say certain things, I'm dismantling things in the heavenlies. He taught me this years ago. I remember the first time he had me do it, I think I was absolutely terrified. Because <laughs> I'm like, well, what if the people, he's like, stop looking at the people and say what I tell you to say. But I'll just explain it to you so that you, the enemy cannot even work a seed of offense. So I want to decree this blood decree. And then I'm going to give you some things he spoke, and I'm going to dismantle something. Some things he showed me yesterday, some things he showed me this morning. See, I'm one of these. I get my foot on the land, and then all of a sudden it's like, whoa, okay, now I know. <laughs> now I know why you sent me. But I was literally seeing the first when we first started talking the first time before I came. And I saw myself sitting at my desk while we were on the phone having the conversation about the double header and about how God was going to do something. And do you understand, when the Lord spoke to us, they, when they first invited me, I think it was a year later that I came, Pro six months, a year. It was, you know, I didn't come with the first. I said, no, it's not time. We waited on the Lord for the time. And we knew there was a double header. Could have came back six months later. No, we waited on the Lord. God's timing's perfect. He knows when you're ready. And he knows when he's made the land ready. And all of creation is crying out for this freedom. Yeah, sons of God, arise. So declare his blood. I'm just going to give you a little bit of um, what I wrote in here in uh, Vignettes from Heaven. So as followers of Jesus Christ, it is essential that we understand the power of his blood. The blood of Jesus is precious and powerful. It is the power to deliver us from all evil. With his blood and his name, we can stand in authority and declare his overcoming life into every situation. We have been bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Instead of guilt, we receive forgiveness. Instead of sorrow, we get joy. Instead of grief, he gives us comfort. 
instead of sin, we become righteousness in him because of the blood. Instead of the curse, we are blessed. This is what the blood has purchased. Instead of sickness, we are healed. Instead of rejection, we are accepted. Instead of poverty, we receive his abundant prosperity. Instead of death, we receive life. This is Isaiah 53 simplified. It is an instead of exchange at the glory table of the Lord. You see, the Lord prepares a table in the midst of your enemies, and it is a glory table. It is a table where you can divinely exchange sickness for health. It is a divine exchange of exchanging the curse for the blessing. You see, you are not under a curse when you come into the power of the blood. And lots of churches won't talk about the blood because it would offend the seekers. Well, you know what? The seekers need to know about the blood because how are they going to war against the enemy if they don't know of the power of the blood that saves them and heals them and delivers them? You know, we need some old-time religion, which goes all the way back to the cross. We are people of the cross. We live a cruciform life, which means we live a cross-shaped life. A cruciform life means, therefore, I no longer live. It's Galatians 2.20 lifestyle. It is a lifestyle that says I'm dead to sin, but I'm alive in God. I no longer live that old life, but the spirit of God's come on the inside of me, and I'm now living a whole new life because of Jesus who's in me. It's all through the blood. So I want to declare the blood. I just, before I did the declaration, I felt like you needed to understand what the blood. I know you know, but you got to be reminded. Do you know God gives me things because when I'm in the midst of the battle, I forget. So I have a few tools in my belt that I pull out when I'm in the midst of something that is just like, Lord, if I don't see something, I don't know what I'm going to do. And so I have tools from the Holy Ghost through the word of God. Isaiah 53 is full of promises. And it's all written about through Hebrews. And especially in 7, 8, 9, and 10. And my goodness, it's just the, all about the blood covenant of Jesus Christ. And the covenant of the blood redeems you from all of the evil that the enemy has sown in. By the blood of the Lamb the word of our testimony, not loving our lives even when faced with death. We overcome. Revelation 12, 11. By his blood, we are made free. By his blood, free to be all he created us to be. By his blood, his spirit breath comes into us. By his blood, our sins are gone forever into the deepest sea. By his blood, our minds and emotions are restored. By his blood, our bodies are made whole. By his blood, no disease can dwell in us. By his blood, we are sent to cleanse and heal. By his blood, we release liberty and we set captives free. By his blood, miracles, signs, and wonders follow me. They follow you too. By his blood. Now, there's times we have to battle for the appropriation of the blood because the enemy is illegal. He will break into a house. See, sometimes we think it's only legal, but there are times, you know, you put security systems in your car, on your house, on different things, right? You know why? Because there's thieves out there. And what did Jesus say in John 10.10? 10? The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you would have life and that life more abundantly. So, you know, sometimes we got to battle that thief and we got to lock him up and we got to bind him up. We got to bind up that spirit of death and destruction. We got to take authority because we have all authority. Are you using your authority? I saw our authority one time in a dream as a red gun. I told my husband, I got to buy a red gun. I saw a red gun in my dream. I want a red gun. And, and I'm like, and I know how to shoot a gun, but I also know how to shoot the missiles and the bullets of heaven. You know what I'm saying? They're targeted. I'm not just shooting over there, shooting over there. No, I'm waiting on the Lord till he gives me the word. And when he gives me the word, I release that word. And I agree with him. And when I release that word that he gives, he backs it up. Because in Psalm 103, the angels of God are waiting to perform the word of the Lord. They're waiting. They're waiting for you to speak and agree with what the Father's saying. And then he commissions them. Mine aren't bored. <laughs> I'm determined they won't be bored. 
even when I want to quit. (laughs) Because of his blood, nothing can harm me. Because of his blood, I stand in my position in Christ. Because of his blood, I am seated with Christ in the heavenlies. Because of his blood, because his blood is the power that keeps me. Because his blood is life, and his life is the light of man. Because his blood bought me and justifies me. Because his blood makes me a new creation in Christ. Because his blood cries for living martyrs who die to self. Because his blood, I have been crucified with Christ. Therefore, I no longer live. Yet, not I, but Christ lives in me in the life I now live. I live by faith in the Son of God who gave himself for me. That's the Galatian 2.20 lifestyle. His blood is his love poured out for all humanity. There is life in his blood. Covering and protection in the blood. Freedom in the power of the blood. My testimony is because his blood set me free. His love flows in his blood. Perfect love, perfect blood, no more fear. By his blood, love casts fear far away. By his blood, I arise in his resurrection life. By his blood, dreams that were dead come to life. By his blood, holy love and purity, pure blood, pure love, I live in the power of his blood. Anybody want this? Run. Come on, come and get it. (laughs) And if you feel to give it to somebody else, go for it. There's more. (laughs) Or keep it. Okay. Now, this morning, when I went to lay down and rest in the Lord last night, I was like, Lord, I need you to speak. I wasn't aware of everything that was going on. You kept me from it. (laughs) But I knew, yep, we're going. God's going to do something. Had my little piece of paper waiting for those words of knowledge, but it was the thing about he was dealing with pride in our hearts and in this region. Remember I'm saying even that prophetic word I released during worship was for the region. You see, God puts you in a region for a reason. And he's doing something, and God is doing something in this day that no man can stop. So I've decided I'm going to be a part of it because I certainly don't want to be on the other side resisting him. Uh -uh. So I'm going to 1 John 4.18 because of what he said. I'm going to lay a foundation of love, and then I'm going to go after some things. All right? (laughs) I didn't want to scare you with the going after first. (laughs) Although some of you were in prayer and I might have. (laughs) You have to know the quiet person who loves the secret place and the glory of the Lord comes out mantled for war often. (laughs) Yep. It's not my normal nature. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves punishment And the one who fears is not perfected in love. I'm going to read verse 19. We love because he first loved us. Love is a posture of humility. It's a place of submission. You can look in um, Luke 22, 42, where Jesus was in the garden, and he was saying, Lord, if you could take this cup from me, take this cup, but not my will, your will be done. That was love. That was love submitting to the Father's plan. That was the one who was created by love to be the answer to the world. For God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son into the world that whoever believes in him would be saved. He didn't send Jesus to condemn the world, but to save the world. So when we're fighting, we have to remember the enemy you will use flesh and blood. But we're not fighting flesh and blood. We're fighting powers and principalities. And in Ephesians 6, we're told to put on the whole armor of God. And, you know, we put on that belt of truth and that breastplate of righteousness and the gospel shoes of peace. We take up the shield of faith, put on the helmet of salvation, take up that sword of the spirit. And then I put on that cloak of humility that Rick Joyner wrote about in the final quest. 
Because humility as a cloak, humility is a posture that God will come close to. God resists the proud, it says in James 6. But he gives grace to the humble. You know, in James 6 and 7, he's telling you, submit, therefore, to God. And then he says, you know, resist the devil. See, you humbly submit to God. Then you resist the devil. And when you resist him, he has to flee. So I said, I'm not going to tell you what happened to me this morning until we're done. Because I wasn't going to give him any place. And I'm like, how dare you even try? You just pulled your hand. <laughs> I'm going to get the more warriors. So I got some more warriors. I had to text a whole bunch last night, and I got some more this morning. I'm like, uh-huh. You just wait. Because we all have angels. And they're coming. And they're here. I feel the presence of warriors. In Colossians 3.12, there's another place where the Lord speaks about how we're to be clothed. Because when we're clothed in certain ways with the Lord God, it positions us in Christ. Colossians 3, starting in verse 12. So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another, and forgiving each other. You know that forgiveness is a huge thing. If you have unforgiveness, you have an open door. Don't want those open doors. Forgive each other. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, you better forgive them. Just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. Beyond all these things, beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Put on love. Love is a person put on Christ. When Jesus was in the garden, when Jesus was telling his disciples that he was getting ready to go to the cross, he said, the enemy's coming, but he has nothing in me. How do we come to that place? Through the blood of the lamb. By being positioned in Christ. How do we come to the place where the enemy can find nothing in us? We come to the Galatians 2.20 lifestyle. We come to that place where we are hidden in Christ. Literally, hidden in Christ. And that is Colossians 3.3. Let me read it to you. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. <laughs> when Christ, this is verse 4, who is our life is revealed, then you also will be glorified. You will be revealed with him in glory. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Now in this, listen to this from Song of Solomon 2, 14 and 15, out of the Passion Translation. For you are my dove, hidden in the split open rock. It was I who took you and hid you up high in the secret stairway of the sky. Let me see your radiant face and hear your sweet voice. How beautiful your eyes of worship and lovely your voice in prayer. Now, we even sang about being hidden. But here's the deal. I'm going to read verse 15 in just a moment. You are not hidden in Christ to hide. You are hidden in Christ to to be a light and to shine and to come out bold and courageous and dealing and destroy, dealing with the enemy, destroying his work, setting the captives free, binding, casting off serpents. What does that mean to cast off serpents? It means you're literally taking off the serpent's work off of people. We do not allow Leviathan to torment our beloved leaders. We have authority to trample on every demonic spirit. But that one, only God truly can hook its nose and pull it. They'll place a position where we deal with this spirit. And it's, it's a regional thing that's going on. It's fearing. And it's a divisive spirit. It's a twisting spirit. It twists people's words, gets people to pray and curse leaders. They don't know what they're saying or doing because they don't know. They don't know. So we forgive them. 
but we bind and forbid the work of the enemy. And in humility, we have all authority. So we loose and we cast off and we set people free from the work of it. So we release resurrection power through the blood of Jesus. See, everything I'm doing right now, I'm teaching you how to do this yourself. I'm modeling to you through the word what you can do. And sometimes you're going to do it and you're going to touch somebody. You're not even going to say anything. There are times that I've had to deal with witches who have come into meetings. And I'm praying for someone who's getting healing. So I'm praying over here for healing. One of the team members comes and says, there's a witch. I look over. I say, Holy Spirit. He's like, mm, he oh, lets me see. I'm like, mm, okay, what do I do? But I'm praying for healing. But I'm having conversation with Holy Spirit quietly. Nothing coming out of my mouth, praying for healing, talking to the Spirit of God. And he says, extend your hand and release my power. Command that witch to repent or leave. I can do that in the Spirit, through the Spirit of the Lord. You see, our spirit, he taught me how to war in silence years ago. He took me on a retreat. I thought I was working on a book. I was gifted a cabin in Moravian Falls. I'd been there before. It was wonderful the first time. This was my second time. It was not wonderful. He said, you're going to be silent for 24 hours, and you're fasting. So I was fasting for three days. And then I was silent for the first 24 hours. And that first night, the howlings and the demonic on the outside. And I used to be really timid. And I'm sitting in there going, because I can't say anything. And he's saying, I'm going to teach you how to war from your spirit. Holy Spirit was speaking to me. He's like, Tracy, I'm in you. Body, soul, and spirit. Our spirit is eternal. And our spirit, when filled with the spirit of God, when awakened by God, is very powerful. So by the end of that 24 hours, I was no longer shaking in fear. But I had learned how to bind the enemy and how to forbid him to come through those cracks in the walls. <laughs> the Holy Spirit taught me. So here I am, I don't know how much longer later, and he's saying, You're still, you're, I'm, I'm agreeing with my teammate, we're praying for healing, but I'm dealing with the witch. And the witch ran out of the meeting, didn't choose to repent. He said, release my power and command, repent or leave. You have that kind of, you guys, I learned how to do this when I was so, timid because you know what I don't like what I see the enemy doing to people and I don't like what he did to me before I got saved and I don't want to see anybody else go through what I went through so if I can pray and if I can agree with God and if I can break the power of the enemy over at least one person's life I'm going to do it but I'm going to keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it because people are trophies for Jesus. So Jesus says, I've got you hidden. Do you know what the split open rock is? That's Jesus. He's the rock. What happened to his side? His side was split with that spear. He is the split open rock. Hide in him. In Christ. <laughs> in verse 15, it says, you must catch the troubling foxes, those sly little foxes that hinder our relationship, our relationship with God. For they raid our budding vineyard of love to ruin what I've planted within you. The enemy wants to ruin the seed of God. Will you catch them and remove them for me? We will do it together. So let me share you what we dealt with yesterday because we're going to deal with it here. Tom had army worms in his yard. What the heck is an army worm? So he's telling me about it. I am like, that is the most vile, disgusting, demonic thing. It eats the seed of the caterpillar that is supposed to become a butterfly. Okay, 
Catch for me the little foxes, for they raid our budding vineyard of love to ruin what I've planted within you. God wants us to recognize that the enemy is trying to steal the seed on the inside of you that is going to be the very transformed butterfly that will fly and bring beauty to the earth. The enemy is trying to devour the seed. So in, in worship, he had me in Joel 1 and 2. And in Joel 1, it's talking about all the locusts and the, and the heck, and they're eating and they're destroying. But you go into Joel 2 and you read about the army of God. <sighs> Here comes the army. And you can hear them because they're all in unison. And no one in the army of God breaks rank. We all go in unison. We all march together, and you can hear the war horses. You can hear the war horses. Lord, release the heavenly war horses. And we're in rank with the army of God. The last time I was here, I had the vision. I was my little girl. I was the little girl with my sword. Because you know what? I'm just a child of God. And there was a dragon warring against you. And I turned around with a big grin on my face, smiling at the Lord. And there he was, Jehovah Sabaoth, on his horse, with all his army with him. And I knew he was fighting for you. And I know he's here today fighting for you because of where he's taken me in the word. Will you go read. I don't have time to read Joel 1 and Joel 2. But let me just tell you, Joel 1's what the enemy's done. But Joel 2 is how God comes in and brings restoration. Joel 2 is all about the promises of God. And it all came on Pentecost, but it's coming again. And again, you see God. God is coming to us again, and he wants to come today, and he wants to come and bring you into every promise, but you've got to stop agreeing, and instead of going, oh my gosh, there's all these army worms destroying my vineyard, no, you've got a Holy Ghost pesticide on the inside of you, the blood of the glory, the blood and the glory of the Lamb that you can release over everything that's yours, over your vineyard, over every aspect of your life, and you release that power and it will destroy the army worm and every kind of creeping locust and every kind of demonic entity that's coming against you because you've got the power of God on the inside of you and you've got the word we were singing every promise of God is yes and amen every promise of God is yes and amen every promise of God is yes and amen Come on, let's appropriate those promises. He is worthy and he is faithful. And let me tell you, suddenlies are coming. And every mocking spirit will bow its knee to Jesus. You see, I've been telling my team and I've been telling people for years, you better know who you are and who's in you. You know what I'm saying? Because we got to know the God that's on the inside of us. Because we're having confrontation with Baals. You see, the enemy is rising his head because he knows his days are numbered. And he wants to take as many into the fires of hell as he can. And don't you tell me there's no hell. All these churches that are preaching that God, I pray, a spirit of repentance would come, Lord God, and the spirit of grace and supplication would awake your church. And Lord God, that we would remind people, you have to make a decision for Jesus. You can't just rely on the decision your mother made or your grandmother. You've got to make a decision for Jesus. Oh, thank God for praying grandmothers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know mine prayed me in. Glory to God. But she prayed me in. She didn't give me a gospel of grace that didn't give me a personal responsibility. We all have a personal responsibility, and we all get a day where we get to choose. And the enemy has blinded the eyes, even in the church. So the Lord showed me that the eye gate, hello, <laughs> That the eye gate needed to be cleansed. So I want to go 
to Matthew 6, and then I'm going to go to a couple other verses. Because the enemy has been blinding people. Matthew 6, 22, my new Bible. Everybody was making fun of me with my Bible because I actually found really pretty duct tape. And I had duct taped it because I liked that Bible so much. I wasn't giving it up. But it, the, pa the pages were really starting to fall out. <laughs> so I finally gave in and got a new Bible. <laughs> but you know how it is with your Bible that you're in all the time and the pages turn and you know, you, can even, you know where things are because you just come on. A worn out Bible shows that you won't have a worn out life. You know, I heard a preacher say once to the young women that were wanting a husband, find one with a worn-out Bible. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And young men, find a gal who's in the Word of God, that her Bible, you know, I know you guys use these. There's got to be a way to see. I do this too, but there's nothing like doing this. Oh, putting your finger over the Word Oh, the eye is the lamp of the body. So then if your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. Now, verse 23. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light that is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? Eeks. Yikes. How about Revelation? Y'all going to love this. Yep. Thank you, Jesus. Return us to our first love. <laughs> kind of what he was doing with worship too, wasn't it? Thank you, Jesus. Revelation 3.18. I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may become rich and white garments so that you may clothe yourself and that the shame of your nakedness will not be revealed. And I saw to anoint your eyes so that you may see. And above this is where it's like you're not hot, you're not cold, you're lukewarm. I'm going to spew you out of my mouth because you think you're okay. And God's like, come and return to me. Let me give you I saw in verse 19, he says, those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to him and I will dine with him and he with me. He who overcomes, I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne. See, we do have trials and battles we have to overcome. This is why sometimes these things happen. I mean, I'm like, Lord, this is wrong. But there's things we have to overcome, and this is how we fight our battles. Hidden in Christ, surrounded in his wraparound presence, and allowing him to put eyes of on our eyes. Because in Ephesians 1, 17, it talks about that God would enlighten the eyes of our heart with wisdom and understandings. So Ephesians 1, 17 and 18, God wants us to have eyes of wisdom that understand what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. But not many want the gift of discernment in all of the gifts that are listed. But let me tell you, I asked for for it. I want to discern what's the human spirit, what's the Lord's spirit, but also what the enemy's doing. Because I don't want to be deceived. Because when you think you can't be deceived, you're deceived. So sometimes we don't even know when we're blind. So sometimes we just need to sit with the Lord and say, show me, search, know me, and give me ourself. So the Lord wants to do that because the eye gate has been affected in this region where the enemy has released a slumbering, blinding spirit. But God would say to you, wake up because you are of me. Listen, in, listen to these verses. And I forgot to ask you how much time, but can I have a few more minutes? Because <laughs> I've got some, yeah, this is good. I want you to understand this whole thing about being in Christ. Because when you understand that you are of him, like of him, 
of him. You are not some, you're not a worm to be trampled on. You're not. There are times we have some bad attitudes and some bad behaviors and some things that can be pretty, pretty dark like, huh? But when we come and we're saved, the light of God is in us. Jesus is the light. And John 1.16 is one of my favorite verses. It says, and of his fullness, speaking of Christ, we have all received and grace upon grace. Do you know what that means? Heaps and heaps. But you know what fullness means? Look in Colossians, study Colossians about the fullness of the inheritance, Ephesians, about the inheritance of his fullness, about receiving all of who he is, all of who he is. We don't have just a little, little bit of God. We have all his authority, all his power, and he wants to back that up. But it's not that we become boastful and prideful, and there's the paradox for the believer. Because if we start thinking it's about us, we fall into pride. That's why for me, the position of being that little girl when I see that is really reassuring. Because the Lord was showing me, good job. You're not thinking you're the big warrior, because you're not. I am. He is. But he's in me, and I'm of him. He's in me, and I'm of him. He's in you, and you're of him. Genesis 1.27. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. In the image of God, you are of him. First John. We're back in first John. We were just there. Because it was all a download this morning. I didn't quite have time to put it all in a document, so I was just writing things down. <laughs> so it's all right. First John 2.29. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone also who practices righteousness is born of him. Of him. First John 3, 18 through 20. Little children, let us not love with word or with tongue, but in deed and truth. We will know by this that we are of the truth and will assure our heart before him in whatever our heart condemns us, for God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Now this one, I want you to write this down. This is such an awesome verse. 1 John 5, 8. I love this. The Spirit is... Wait, I wrote down the wrong one. That's not it. Is it. Which one was it, Lord? I know it's it's a five eight, so maybe it was third John. This is what happens when you get downloads. Sometimes you're getting it so fast you write down the wrong thing. But God is bigger than that, isn't he? There's no five in there. Okay, Lord, where is it? Because this verse is so important. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's just by four. There we go. I wrote eight and it's four. This is so good. First John, five, four. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. For whatever is born of God. Okay, so you're born of God. When you know the ministry and the work that you're doing is born of God, because John 3 talks about what's born of the flesh is flesh, but what's born of the spirit is spirit. But when you know, you can stand on that, because whatever's born of God, he's going to fight for. And he's the one who fights our battles. So you are born of God. And if you're not born of God here today, I say it's a good day 
to get born of God, to become born again. Because when you are born of God, you overcome the enemy. Jesus said, there's much coming, there's this and there's that. But don't you worry, don't you fear. I have overcome the world. And you are of him. So being of him gives you the ability to overcome the works of the enemy. Revelation in those couple of chapters is, he who has ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, hear, and you will overcome. And there's promise after promise. And all throughout the word, there's promise after promise. So God is wanting to remind you of the promise. And he's saying, do not fear because if the enemy has come this strong, it's because he fears you. And God turns everything around. I have watched the Lord turn things around in this last year in such a way that I am astounded. He spoke to me on December 4th last year, let it be noted. Let, and I mean, I'm, just, I'm worshiping. I'm, I'm just worshiping. I'm in this secret place. I love you, Lord. I'm just worshiping. And all of a sudden, I wasn't praying. I wasn't decreeing. I was worshiping. And I hear, let it be noted. And the Lord began to give me different things that the enemy had taken that God was going to restore. One of them, my mantle, my prophet's mantle had been missing. He had commissioned this to be done. And I didn't know where it was, where it gone. I was so upset. And so was the apostolic one. This was on a Monday. On Saturday, I found it in a place I would have never put it. See, when angels bring things back, they put things in places you never would. It's like when my ring disappeared one time in a place. It could, there's no way it could have gone there. It, the, it could, there's no way it could have gone through the vent and be back in the corner. But the Lord gave my little daughter a dream. And I'd been like, my engagement ring was, you know, the diamond that part of the wedding set was missing. And she had a dream one day. She comes up, Mom. I had a dream where your ring is. So we opened up the vent. There is no way it could have got there. And there it was. God will do this. Here's one you can't even try to explain. Two days after the Lord said, let it be noted. A book I'm working on that I've been working on a long time. <laughs> and hopefully I'll get done in the next couple of months. <laughs> I'd gone and I'd sat with a woman that um, I worked with, Intrepid Warriors, and we did hours and hours of transcription because I was just telling some things so then we could write them because we write, we'd do it together. They were missing from her computer and they were missing from mine. For, I was trying to think, was that now, was it, because I got it back this year, so it was at least three years. Now listen. They show up in the book. I open up my book folder to, to write. These files are there. But can I tell you, this is a new computer since then. Let it be noted. He said the enemy would have to restore it double, at least, scripture, but sevenfold also. And I have a list of things, and God's been doing them. You can't make that up. It was the, the God of the courts of heaven. And he said, Tracy, I want you to share the testimony because I'm doing this for my body. And if they will believe me, and the, some of them, I'm just going to surprise them anyways. Do you know what I'm saying? He just likes to surprise you. Some of you, you don't know how to believe. He's like, I'll teach you how to believe. I'm just going to give you some stuff, and that's going to make you believe. And he's restoring things. And so health and finances and family members. My three siblings have given their hearts to the Lord in the last year. Hallelujah. Household salvation. Come on. I mean, I'm, I don't know what. Well, I mean, and I'm telling you. There is like Holy Ghost is showing up and baptize them. And, you know, and I'm in there. Well, uh, I used to make fun of you, Tracy. I know. <laughs> I, I, did, I didn't like going to family things very much because I knew they were all talking about me. You know, Holy Roller, this, that, and everything. But let me tell you, who do they call? 
when things are going bad. You know why? They're not, it's not you. They see Jesus, and that's what every one of them has said. Because I see God in your life. I want him. Let him. Healing, deliverance. Come on. That's a good fruit right there. Let it be noted. Come on. What are you needing? Let it be noted that everything that's been stolen, your health, your peace, in Jesus' name. Now, let me talk a little bit more about that army worm. Because the Lord woke me up. Yes, when I woke up yesterday, he said trauma bonding. I said trauma bonding. I know it's a psychological term. I looked it up. And I'm going, I know this isn't in the natural what you're saying to me. He said, nope. He says it's a work that the enemy is trying to do. And so what he was showing me throughout the day is when we've gone through something and we haven't had time to recover or we haven't had time to grieve or we haven't had time, the enemy will come and he will try to attach to places of trauma and disappointment. And he tries because we're in a weakened state. Well, greater is he who is in us because you know what? When I am weak, he is strong. And so in those places, it's illegal. The father is very angry and he's very upset about it. He is very, and justice is coming. The Lord is going to bring recompense. You read Joel 2. God gets up. God leads the army. And God restores. And the Lord is restoring. And how he loves you. Your faithfulness. And I don't know where the other one is. But how he loves you. How he loves you. And he's restoring peace to you. Health to you. But he's also saying Enter my rest. Enter my rest. Enter that place of rest. And it's okay to have a vacation. And it's okay to have a little break. It's okay to grieve. Let the grief go. Because if we don't grieve well, he showed me this when my father passed. My father and I was very close. And I'm like, who am I going to talk to? Because my husband and I didn't have that yet. Because my husband hadn't been healed. We talked, but we didn't talk, talk. You know what I mean? <laughs> he was shut down. Enemy had shut him down. God just showed me how to love him. And, but, the, but what I needed, I was still going to dad. <laughs> so when dad passed, I'm like, <gasps> you know, what am I going to do? <laughs> and the Lord said, grieve well because you loved well. Grieve well because you loved well. Because if you don't grieve well, the enemy's going to try to find a place. And so God gives us permission to grieve. But I, and it was grief, I, six months of grief, and then he supernaturally removed it. One day when I was giving a thanksgiving offering at church, I was given a thank offering. Thanksgiving offering. The word of the Lord in the scripture. And I got to the part where precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of one of his saints. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon me, whoosh, lifted the grief off. He didn't even allow me to go into a season of unholy grief or the enemy. But he spoke to me about it, grieve well. And you know what? He had me read the Mitford series during that time because my dad was Episcopalian. And the Mitford series is a series about an Episcopalian priest. And he wasn't a priest, but he was Episcopalian, and he was on the vestry. And the year he passed, he was supposed to go on a, we were going to do a mission trip together. So I was so disappointed. And he wasn't even, he wasn't even that old. You know what I'm saying? And I was just having to give it, and the enemy just kept trying to beat me up during that time. Do you know, I'm going to tell you what the enemy did to me in the time of my father's grief. The Lord's just reminding me. You want to talk about illegal. I'm on the way to his funeral. And we're at a hotel. We stopped in Monterey, California. He lived in Merced. Because the last time that we'd had with him was um, a little vacation in Monterey. And I just wanted to be in that place, you know. And so my husband is very sweet. Oh, and he's such an amazing man of God. He's been healed. And do we have a relationship? <laughs> we're so in love, it's crazy. And do we talk? Talk, 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 talk depths. <laughs> I'm like, wow, God, this is what I always thought it would be. <laughs> it's amazing. Let it be noted. I'm go we're going down to breakfast. 
And all of a sudden, I feel something whoosh, push me, and I fall. And I am in excruciating pain. So we go to the clinic, but they ju- they're so slow. I'm like, I'm just going to deal with it. I'm just got, we got to go. I got to get, I got to get, you know, uh, um, get over there to where, you know, the service and stuff's going to be. And I make it through. It was so amazing. They seated me right behind where my dad had spent a prayer vigil together. I'd gone with him one time when I was there. Um, I think it was during Easter. And um, we'd gone to an early morning prayer watch together. And I was sitting right behind that spot. And nobody knew except he and I and Daddy. Up. And it was so amazing. And, and I shared. And then, you know, we're driving back. And I'm telling my husband, you have to stop. I am in so much pain. When I get home and I go to the doctor, I broke my tailbone. Now, let me tell you, as soon as I found out my father was sick with cancer, and at this cancer that he had, I'd seen healed. I'd pray, you know, I've seen healed. I started reading and praying Psalm 121. And there's a verse in there about God doesn't let your foot slip. So guess what the enemy did? He came whispering to me, God didn't keep you. You fell and broke your tailbone. And I'm like, you're such a liar. I bind you, lying spirit. This has a really good story. (laughs) I'm serious. Wait till you hear what God did. Because you need to hear this. How dare you? You you lying spirit. Well, a couple weeks in, all right? Like two weeks in. I'm getting ready to go meet with someone at church that we're needing to deal with an issue of deliverance. I'm in my home. Now, you understand, I've fallen, so I have shoes with tread on, okay? And I did when I fell, too. I had tennies on. Hello. And I'm in my house, and all of a sudden, I feel this push again. In my house. Her. <laughs> And I go flying down the stairs and take out all the pictures on the wall, screaming, Jesus! And I land on the other side of the stairs. And I call a friend. I'm laying there, and I'm looking up the other way. So I'm facing the opposite way I fell. Like I literally flipped and landed. I was already broken. You should have seen the bruises after that. (laughs) no 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 you're such a liar see at that moment the enemy was wanting to take me out and you know he whispered to me such a liar if you just prayed more your dad would have been healed I, I bind you lying spirit I forbid it the next week Yeah, I thought I was in pain before. Well, I'll just say, bruises up and down. (laughs) We've got a guest coming in, and I'm over the intercession. And I'm going to, and we've been teaching on the watchman. I've been teaching on the watchman. And I'm thinking, I'm not going to go. So guess what happens sometimes when you've taught some things? People repeat them back to you. So I, te- I text one of the, the people, you know, that is a leader and asked them to take it. And they said, I will if you really feel it. But you're always telling us, don't let the enemy take you out of our place. Oh, <laughs> guess what I did? I put my little heels on. I didn't have these intrepid shoes yet. I put my little heels on. I, sh- I should not have been wearing heels. But I'm like, devil, you're under my foot and you're under my heel. I put my heels on. Just little ones. I had enough wisdom. (laughs) I don't know if I had any high, real high ones anymore anyways. I put those little heels on, and I went, led the intercession, took him into the watch. God did mighty things. Touched my husband that night. (laughs) God, he got a prophetic word.
word. Then they called me up. We got a prophetic word together, got curses broken off of us. The next morning, I told my husband, oh, I am in pain. I don't want to go. But I got up, and I thought, I'll just make it. We had two services. I'll just go, and I'll, if I, I'll get through the first service. So I went to intercession, got through. So the first service is going. Worship is awesome. I start getting words of knowledge for healing. I call the prayer team up. I start releasing them, release them. And as after we're praying for people who are getting healed, I'm walking over, and I'm probably sitting right where you guys are. And as I'm walking, a lightning bolt of God, a power of God, hits me, and I was instantly healed. Now, listen, I had x-rays before and x-rays after. They're trying to say, I don't understand. I do. God healed me. As I was walking. But here's the word I released during worship. God is releasing the oil of glory. And the oil of glory comes over you like the oil that is on a duck. And when that oil comes on you, the things of the enemy can no longer stick. And those things that he tries to send against you no longer have any place. And the oil of glory is a healing oil. And in the glory, I know, in the glory, the enemy can't come. The accuser can't even come in the glory. And person after person was healed, including myself. I was like, wow. Ah! You, know, <laughs> you know, when you're kind of like, am I really healed? You know, <laughs> but I was healed. But in the midst of it, it was a trial that I had to overcome. And people would try to say that there was something in my life. But I'd get on before the Lord and I'd say, God, is there sin? What have I done? And he'd say, no, the enemy is a thief. And it was illegal. And vengeance is mine. And he says, you're going to come out of this with an anointing greater than what you went into. Because that's part of God's vengeance. So I believe today God wants to release to this house the oil of glory. I didn't know I was going to share this word, but I remember now in the prophecy I started talking about the oil of glory. Because since then, when I see the place where God's going to begin to pour out the oil of glory, where he's going to open up those wells, I know to come in and partner with him. And now he's telling you about the new sword that I got in the dream. And it was covered in this bubbly stuff. And it was so powerful. And it was like, God, this sword would deal with the things of the enemy in a way that the sword I had in the past season didn't. And it's all him because I know whose power it is. But do you want to step into that new place in God? You see, we've got to stop sitting on our little high knees and saying, oh, there must be something wrong. Yeah, there's something wrong. There's a devil who hates everyone who's contending for healing and deliverance, salvation and the prophetic and for the fullness of God. You know, people will say, well, they don't do that over at that church. No, you know why? Because they just show up on Sunday, have a nice tea party, and go home. And there's salvation secure. There's no criticism in that because you, we need every expression of the church. I'm not being critical. God loves his whole church. I'm saying when you're contending for healing, salvation, and deliverance, he is looking. So in our weak places sometimes, he'll come. Well, guess what? In our weakness, God's strength is made perfect. Perfect. So the Father is fighting for you, and he is releasing. So I'm going to go into prayer. Would you want, if you can, stand, stand. If you don't feel to stand, sit. If you feel to kneel, kneel. If you feel to come forward, but it's time to pray. I want to decree over you Psalm 91, 14. 
Uh, there's another scripture about being hidden in the rock when Moses said, God, I want to see your glory. <laughs> He's like, I'll let you see my glory, but I'm going to hide you in the cleft of the rock, and I'm going to let you see my backside where my goodness goes by. I feel him here that way today. I feel the Lord bringing his goodness. So Psalm 91, 14 in the Passion Translation, for here is what the Lord has spoken to me, because you have delighted in me as my great lover, because you've delighted in him. I will greatly protect you. I will set you in a high place, safe and secure before my face. He's overplayed his hand. Miracle working power is being released. God fights for us. But see, here's what happened. The enemy tries to intimidate you through circumstances. I mean, seriously, that was really mean, wasn't it? Here I am going to my dad's memorial service. He's mean. But God is great. And I thank God for the testimony. Because of that testimony, I got a prophetic word. And because of that prophetic word, people got healed. And because of that prophetic word, God released a substance of himself. I thank God how he takes us through for his keeping power in every promise. So no matter what comes, he is faithful. And let it be noted restoration is coming and it's here i'm talking do you know what was restored in that file 30,000 words of transcription on a new computer <laughs> in a new book file that we just made last summer and i'd only put the new things i'd worked on in it it didn't have the old stuff God is a miracle-working God. He, <laughs> what do you need back? <laughs> I believe he wants to release a fresh anointing today. Let's just lift our hands up to him. Father, we thank you that you are a miracle-working God and that you are the God of the supernatural explosions of crashing in and saying, let it be noted, I am turning the courts around. All the indictments the enemy has had against you, the enemy is saying, because they've honored my blood, because they put the blood and they've plead the blood and they worship, I am turning it around. Let it be noted. Divine health is going to be in this house. Oh, there are wells that have contended for what others have walked in. We're like John G. Lake where he could hold a virus in his hand or put it on his arm and that virus would dissipate and no one would get sick because of the glory and the power of God. Father says you want that kind of anointing? Let it be. Ho! Oh, in Jesus' name, I release the oil of glory resurrection power i break the power of every curse set against you i break the power of divination witchcraft hexes vexes rebellion charismatic witchcraft i send trafficking spirits to the feet of jesus looser now in jesus name i release the power of god and i release the oil of glory in jesus name i command every cell total nucleus transformation all over this house lord father i ask that you would release the anointing of the oil of glory and father it would be greater and more powerful than any oil well that's been in this region lord because it's going to release the wealth of the kingdom of god the supernatural power and fire and glory oil of glory oil of glory oil of glory oil 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 Whew oil of glory holy unto the lord holy unto the hey. holy unto the lord god is marking you Shoo. you will see every promise of god manifest their yes and amen fresh anointing on you mighty man of valor fresh anointing on you man of god man of the word man of god 
holy unto the Lord, holy unto the Lord. Could you put some music on? Fire and glory, holy, holy. Do not fear, do not fear, do not fear. You're in a glory bubble, do not fear. Do not fear, mighty man of God, you need a new sword. Shoo, hey, ho, hey, sha, hey, sha. Last year I was battling. It was near the end of what we'd been battling, and I'd been battling that thing for goodness gracious. That was a mean battle. And I'm walking and I'm praying in the spirit. And all of a sudden I'm going, hey. Hey, 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 hey. Yes, on a public walking trail. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that was awesome. I could feel the spirit of the Lord. I don't know if it was the next day or the day after. Can't recollect. Um, usually I try to walk every day, but anyways. Listen, I'd been battling some serpents, and I'd been seeing them manifest. I saw the biggest green, ugly snake I'd ever seen in my life. And I'd never seen a snake where, we, where we'd moved to. And I saw, I saw snakes during this season. Blech. I'm like, give me that gun. I want that red gun. I'll shoot that thing. <laughs> I know you're not supposed to, but I would. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> and I'm a koramaha sheramaha sete. And all of a sudden I'm going, hey, sha! Hey, sha! Hey, sha! And the Spirit of God was on that. So I decided I better go look up what that means. Hey is one of the first. It's in Yod Hey Vav Hey in the name of the Lord. It means behold. Sha <laughs> means deliverance. I was speaking Hebrew when I was praying in the Holy Ghost. So here I am walking down. Hey, Sha. And I'm saying, behold deliverance. Behold deliverance. Behold deliverance. You need the power of the Holy Ghost on the inside of you because Holy Ghost knows what to pray when you don't. And he was praying what needed to be prayed. He was decreeing what needed to be decreed. And do you know what happened? The next time I saw a snake, I was walking. I'm like, oh, snake in the road. Okay, come back. Whoop, dead smash snake in the road. Totally smashed. Hadn't seen one since. And I knew, I knew that battle was won. No matter, God will clean up the backlash. God will clean up the words. God will clean up the dumb things people believe. You know, oh, yeah, you want to believe that about me? Okay, whatever. <laughs> I don't care. The one I got to be right before is him and with my family too. But God, I'm going to live for an audience of one. And, Lord God, I'm going to do what you say no matter what people think. And, Lord, I'm going to walk in. You know, there were things during that season that t I was like, I don't want to do this. I, you're telling me to go talk to these people and to tell them what's going on. And I don't really think they're going to believe me. But maybe you'll do something and they will. And, no, I don't think they did. And I'm like, oh, man, I hate it when you show me things and people don't believe. Because then they get to walk through the mess of it, and at one someday, you know, God's going to have to clean it up. And he's good about that, but they wouldn't have to walk through it if they believed the hard things that sometimes God says. Oh, you know, the problem when we're flowing in the river, it's good. But we get so la, 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 and we just want tickle angels. <sighs> There's still a war. We're still contending with Jesus. And we do it from the place of being seated with him and allowing the Holy Spirit. So there's a hey, Shah anointing on you. A hey, Shah deliverance anointing. Fire and glory. Fresh oil. Fire and glory. Hey, Shah. I put a wall of fire around you in every assignment trying to come against you. Oh, and twist you, I break it off of you in Jesus' name. And I call you forth as a deliverer. A delivered deliverer, a healed healer, filled with boldness all the days of your life. No compromise, no compromise, no compromise. In Jesus' name. No fear. No fear. Oh, even in the gentleness of who you are, you are a mighty warrior. And there's a fire on the inside of you that's about to come forth. And that fire burns the yokes of the enemy. It breaks bondages. 
and brings hope into your own heart, he's going to fill you even more. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. So, Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in this place today. I thank you, Lord God, for your healing, delivering power and the release of the oil of glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Ooh, holy moly. All right, so stay stay in this place, amen. We did, was that good? <laughs> and I have much to tell Tracy that I haven't even told her, right? She's so hitting stuff, even in this region, amen. We've seen that thing, others have seen that thing, that, that Leviathan thing, and it is so in this region, so... So, let's take an offering. I sow into Tracy Ann. Amen. And I, she's here on a very divine assignment. Not just for us, but for us as a family, but for us as a ministry, uh, for this region. And there's further a shifting into everything that God wants to do. You can make checks payable to Global Harvest Church, and you can sow. So, hallelujah, let's do that quickly and then just continue. Amen. So these guys are going to come, take up if you want to give into that. Hallelujah. Wow. Thank you, Lord. God's good. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I really, just as a side note, um, I have both of Tracy's books, and they're excellent. Um, her book on what's... In, is Intrepid Warrior your book on intercession? Yeah. If you're interested in prayer, and even if you're not, read this. <laughs> the mandate of that book was to bring the love of prayer back to the church and to, and to heal the wall of separation that intercessors had caused. Um, by thinking themselves more superior, is actually to, to heal a breach and to bring the love of prayer and intercession back to the church. Because we're all called to pray and intercede. Some have a special grace, but a special grace doesn't make you superior. You know, it's a special grace from God. And so it, it's, um, it, it's, an, it's pretty. And then, you know, the other one I have to tell you, I've given that to unbelievers. It's a great Christmas present. It's actually probably the thing that brought my sisters like closer to, to that came back. They loved it. They love and my mom. My mom who's almost there, <laughs> God knows, but um, she, I gave her a whole stack, and she gave them to everybody pretty much she knew. So, it's it's a it's good for us because it's revelation, but it's a good gift. Yeah, they're excellent. This is one of the best books on prayer I've read. So I will say that, and I don't say that lightly. It's excellent. Hallelujah. All right, so tomorrow night also, um, Supernatural School. Uh, you can come, even if you're not enrolled as a student, you can come and audit. And um, so come and join us. Um, wow, God's good, amen. So Tracy? Tracy Ann, just continue. If you, however you want to minister, if you want to, if you need to leave, you are dismissed. But if you want to stick around, you can stick around. So praise God. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't have 10, take it. Just let them know. Oh, yeah, you can do that, too. Actually, um, I use, those go to missions, so I can do missions. See, I don't, yeah, it's, yeah, missions. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I feel like the Father um, just wants to deal with some heart things. And so um, if you've been dealing with fear at all, I just want you to come forward. And, and let me just, we're just going to pray. And we just, and if you don't want to come forward, that means you're dealing with fear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys, I've done a lot of things afraid. Can you imagine? There, 
When the enemy was speaking those things to me, I had to fight fear. I had to fight it. So there's no shame. Do you know what this is doing? This is breaking off shame. Shame is one of the tactics of the enemy to keep you powerless. And God hasn't given you shame. In Isaiah 61, it talks about that instead of shame, he's going to give you a double portion. A double portion of himself and of joy. So, Father, I thank you that you're breaking off fear. And I'm just going to put your hand on your heart, and then I'm going to put my hand, and I'm just going to release his perfected love. Perfect love. Cast out fear in Jesus' name. I break that assignment off of you, daughter of God. Holy, you're, I break off intimidation. I loose you from that spirit of intimidation, and I call you forward in to the heart of God. Thank you, Jesus. Holy, perfect love. Whoa, perfect love. Fire of love. Fire of love on your heart. And on everything you put your hand to, fire of love, loose her now, fear. Spirit of fear, I bind you off of these people. Spirit of fear that you will not grip this heart anymore. Shoo. I loose you. I loose you from fear, and I bind that spirit of fear, and I forbid it in your life. Perfect love. Peace of God. Shalom of the Father. In Jesus' name. You will no longer be gripped by fear, but you will be gripped and encircled and wrapped in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You will be clothed in Christ and filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and boldness. I command the turnaround to come into every realm of your life. Finances, relationships. Whoa. <sighs> Jesus' name. Holy, holy, be thou delivered from every root of rejection. Whoa, rejection, fear of rejection, go. In Jesus' name, I bind you. Fire of heaven, fire of heaven. Love and acceptance. Love your loved son, your good son. Your loved, your good son. Loved, cherished, treasured, treasured, treasured. Ooh, do you feel him? Yeah. More. He's coming on you. More, Lord. Increase. Thank you, Jesus. Oramahasi, precious man of God. <laughs> I pull out every root of fear. And I release the power of love, perfected love. Huh. <laughs> Hmm. Rise up, man of God. Be that voice God has spoken to you. There's things he's put on the inside of you that are burning. Oh, I break and deliver you from every place of abuse. Hmm. <sighs> rejection, go. Roots, fear of rejection, go. Fear of failure, go. Confidence in love, perfected love. God, confidence. Shalom. Shalom. Receive. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Father, no child should live in fear. So pull it out of his heart. Perfect love. Perfect love. Perfect love. Shoot it holy unto the Lord. I pull out every root of rejection and fear. Fear go. Perfect love in. Perfect love. Oh, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Oh, you've had to be so strong. Oh. Lord is mantling you with a new mantle, so as a prophetic sign, I'm going to put my apostolic mantle on you. 
It's a sign. He literally, when he showed me this one to have commission, showed me the anointing he would release in this age, that the apostolic anointing that was coming was an apostolic love and a radiance of love. And a radiance of love that would also be a wall with holy boundaries. Holy boundaries. Mantle her, Lord. Mantle her, Lord. Holy unto the Lord. Thus far, no more hands off. Only what is a father. Marked by God. Oh, it's time. Fear go. Be filled with holy love and boldness. No fear. Fear go in Jesus' name. Confidence. Cutter. Love of God. Strength. Surely you will walk in peace and strength with the mind of God. Shalom, I break off divination and witchcraft that's hit you because you're such a woman of faith. You're such a woman of faith. Shoo! Shoo! Fire! Holiness, fire! Fire! Yes. More, Lord. Increase. Kerata. You're going to sing songs that are going to break bondages of fear. You're going to come out. You didn't, you, you know, there's sometimes little boxes we don't even know we're in. But I saw them breaking off of you today. And I see you coming into wide open spaces where God, where things have been contended. I literally wrote, a, got a word recently for our region, but I've been thinking about it, and I'm realizing it wasn't just for my region, and I can see that this word literally is for you. I posted, it's called Wide Open Spaces. I really think you need to read the whole thing. But it's about wells. <laughs> and a well got contended, and this got contended. But the Lord is bringing you to the place where the well that's going to open through the sound and the song and the well that's going to open holy unto the Lord, holy unto the Lord through the joy of stepping in to motherhood. <laughs> the well and the mama bear anointing that's coming on you. Oh, I'm telling you, <laughs> don't mess with mama. But in the spirit, you're going to learn something as you become a mama that you're going to carry into the spirit realm. You ain't going to be one of, you're going you're gonna to be so sweet, but you're fierce. Okay, so you aren't going to be one that anybody going to roll over, like roll you down, okay? Like seriously, they better not mess with you or your kids. They better not mess with the well of God that he's giving you to open up the well of salvation the well of the glory of his presence. You can't even <laughs> touch that glory, but you can protect it and sing over it. So, Father, I pull out every root of fear where she holds back, where she holds back, where she knows she needs to step in, but she holds back. I break off intimidation. I break off fear. And I loose the power of perfected love. <laughs> hey, joy, joy, joy. There's a new sound, 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 sound. Resonating with the frequency, frequency, frequency of deliverance. Oh, oh, oh. hey, oh. And even when you sing, chains are being broken, shackles are falling off, diseases are scattering, and every devil behind those things flees, shrieking, and they won't come back. Shoo. <sighs> More, Lord. More, Lord. <laughs> More, Lord. <laughs> Yay, God.
So the Lord had me wear my, um, we had 28 years anniversary this year, and my husband got me this bracelet. It has seven hearts. And seven times four. So seven's the number of, of completion, of perfection, of rest. But it's also the number of new cycles and new revolutions. <laughs> so seven with hearts is this realm of a revolution that God's wanting to work in you. Now, for I got it for my 28th anniversary, which is seven times four. And four is the number of global impact. It's the number that represents where the four winds of the spirit are released to the four corners of the earth, so global impact. So God is putting an anointing on you for love. But it's not the kind of love that the world is walking in today where they say, oh, if I love, I can do this, I can do that. No, it's the holy fire of the realm of love that is a plumb line of truth. And it is love that delivers. And it is love that heals. And it is love that speaks. And it is justice. But it is not world's justice. It is the justice of God. And there's an anointing on your life that will have global impact. But don't run ahead. And don't let people promote you into places or positions in whatever realm that God brings you into that you are not called to or ready for. There is a waiting. There is a timing. There is a preparation of the Lord. And the seed that he's put on the inside of you, he is protected. And no army of worms is going to take that seed. Because you will birth as a butterfly, transforming yourself. God's transforming you. The only word for transformation was in the Bible. But the world's tried to take that word and make it something else. But that word is a Bible word. It is the transformation power of the Holy Spirit. And God's giving you a transformation anointing. And it will break yokes. Father calls you an artisan of his heart. Thank you, Jesus. And I literally see you writing things of legislation from heaven. I see you with this big pen with a quill, writing and writing and writing. And you're hearing and the things that you're writing literally will shift the atmosphere. Poet is another name for prophet. Prophesy. Write. Prophesy. Write. Prophesy. Write. Decade after decade, poets can transform society. Writings. Poetic expressions, legislations from heaven, legislations from heaven, legislations from heaven, holy unto the Lord. Fear out, perfect love in. <laughs> receive, receive. And don't, don't despise how he made you. Mm -mm. He knows. Yeah. I used to think, I'm so different. Like people would say I was weird or call me Spacey Tracy. Or <laughs> but when I got to know the Father and he showed me, he made me the way he made me for the, the way he wanted to communicate to me but also through me. And he took the things that weren't him that, you know, the clothes people try to get you to wear. He's like, mm -mm. let me clothe you. Let me form you and fashion you. And just embrace who I've made you to be. So I just speak that over you. Embrace. It's okay. It's okay. Because he did it. So thank you, Father. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Those quiet spaces you like or so that you can hear the voice of heaven speaking so you can write the legislations. See, he made me to desire quiet places. He made me to desire that in a family barbecue, I would go find a book and a place to read that was quiet. Or I'd have a note. You see me with a notebook almost all the time. Now you can have your phone and talk into it. 
I'm learning how to do that. <laughs> but I'd be writing. I see you. I see you next to a lake. I see you by a mountain. I see you, I see you finding under a tree a spot with a notebook, just sitting and, and in that beautiful place. And then you're going to hear, and you're going to write it. And you're not going to release things until he says it's time. And some are only for you and him. Be okay with that too. So your mantle looks different. It's okay. <laughs> he clothes us each. <laughs> No hiding in shadows of darkness. And I pull you out. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for Sarah Lynn. I thank you for her beautiful, exquisite heart. I pull out fear, and I put your perfect love in Jesus' name. <laughs> Today, intimidation has no more place. See, that thing will try to grab you on your back and pull you back and hold you back from even stepping forward into the very thing you carry in your heart that you dream of. <laughs> I bind you, spirit of fear. Fear of rejection, rejection. Every root, I pull you out. <laughs> All the way out. Don't, it's okay. Look at me. What's your name? the lies off of you. See, there was a day where I stood in a prayer line and I came up with my head bowed low, afraid, ashamed of my life, intimidated and scared. God took all of that and he filled me with himself and with his perfect love. And layer after layer, he took out 
rejection. And he took out fear. And he took out shame. And he put in himself. And I've never been the same. So I say for you the same. <sighs> You're going to be so wildly bold. So wildly confident. And even though people have thought she's confident, you know, inside there was a battle. That battle ends today. Bold love perfected love, mighty warrior. <laughs> you have so much to give. You have so much to pour out. You have so much. Fire, fire, fire. Awake, 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 alert. Aware, aware, aware. Open your eyes to see. Lord, I anoint her eyes and the eyes of her heart to be illuminated. Spirit of God. It's a new day. Watch out for this one. <laughs> Whoop. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> That's a good word. <laughs> she prophesying to herself. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Every assignment that's come against you, I cancel it right now. I pull the darts out of your back. In Jesus' name, I pull the darts out of your back. No more night, no more fear, no more darkness. It's a new day, the light of God. It's a day, new day dawning. It's a 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 new day dawning. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Fire! Shoo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I pull your name out of that demonic fire and I bring it into the fire of holiness and every curse that's been set against you. I break the power of it right now in Jesus' name. Through the bloodline, I release the power of the blood and I break the spirit of fear and intimidation and I release the power of life, resurrection, healing in Jesus' name. And the love of God, the love of God. I heal every broken place. Just as Jesus said, we bind you up. We bind up your heart. We release double to you. Double.
just want to declare shalom over you. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, you, I was pointing to you knowing. I want to release shalom. I didn't know who you were, but I wondered if you were the other one. In Jesus' name, I break fear and intimidation off of you. God's gifted you. Do not fear. He will teach you. I can remember saying, Lord, I don't want to see any more demons. I want to see the angels. He's like, I'm needing to teach you some things. You have to recognize some things. And he showed me that I was in this hot air balloon, but I wasn't ready to fully ascend because I was tied down by some things. And then he took me into a season where he began to cut those ties. And as he began to cut those ties, because he was teaching me not everything that I saw I could share, but when to share and when not to. And as he cut the ties that were holding me back from things, he was doing a deep work in my heart. A deep, deep work in my heart. And he was teaching me about rest and warring from rest and taking care of my physical self so that my spiritual self could be strong too. And so I see the Lord bringing you into a calibration. And I see him fine-tuning who you are. And I see him taking out those places where you feared the very way he's made you in the gifting. And I bind that spirit of fear and loose you from it because he's going to give you a big sword when you're ready to pick it up. And that thing that you saw, you're going to be able to pick up that sword and just place it right in. But you'll know when you're doing it, you're not doing it alone. You'll, you'll, it's all about team. It's all about the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's never about isolation. The enemy would try to isolate seers and prophets. It's about continually pressing through to be part of relationship and to be part of family and to keep that connection and to guard it and protect it. And so I release fire against everything. Mm? I blind the eyes that are peering at you through the name of Jesus Christ. No, hidden in the cleft of the rock, hidden in Christ. Father, command, we take authority over this thing that's peering. I send fire of God into it to go to the feet of Jesus. I break the power of it where it's trying to track you and intimidate you and get you not to move forward. God allowed you to see it, but it's now <laughs> kind of upset. <laughs> it's really upset because I got, we got a whole army going with us now. <laughs> it's getting routed out. It's losing its stronghold. So in Zechariah 9, it talks about Jesus coming humble and lowly on a donkey. It's a prof prophetic picture of who he is. And God's saying humility is your greatest friend. And he came and he comes and he's the river and the river that's going to flow. And he delivers prisoners from the waterless pit. And he brings you into the stronghold of hope. And he brings them into the stronghold of hope. So I see the Lord building a stronghold of hope and a tower of a refuge around you. And you'll be hidden in Christ. And I see him giving you, your, expanding your shield. So the enemy can't see you behind the shield. So you have nothing to fear because God's upgrading your armor. And so now I break the assignment of the evil one in Jesus' name off of you, off your life, off your back. And I pull it out. Where that twisted spirit tried to take you under tried to take you into its murky mires and tried to take you out, I break it in Jesus' name. I loose you from all the power of witchcraft and divination. I loose you from every assignment set against you. I bind and forbid every trafficking witchcraft, demonic spirit set using, oh, in Jesus' name, and I put the wall of the blood of glory 
I put a wall of the blood of glory between you and every being around you. I cancel the assignment and I speak resurrection power and glory over you. I release that recalibration of the Spirit of God that I saw for you. I release shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken. I break the power of accusation. I forbid it. I cancel it. I speak your loved, accepted. <laughs> You're raising up a company of eagles. <laughs> Eagle warriors who have wisdom. They're eagle doves. They have the nature of the dove and the eye of the eagle. The eye of the eagle flies straight into the sun. The dove is so singly focused on the beloved. You're raising up a company of single fo focused lovers of God who will stand together, who will be a picture of unity and community and family not just your own natural but you're going to raise them up around you your children are going to be magnets to the hungry and the thirsty and the seeking <laughs> so there's going to be a lot of eagle doves <laughs> oh yeah thank you jesus I see them like they can see in the darkness, like the little wise owls. I don't know if you ever saw that little movie with the little owls. But those little owls fought off the big demonic owls. <laughs> That's why I see this company that you're raising up with wisdom. So, Father, I thank you that the Spirit of the Lord rests upon her and you mantle her. Father, I thank you for the power of the blood of Jesus. Lord, where the enemies tried to come in, Whew. We just release her from that. Whoa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to tell you guys a secret about intercession. God shows you things. You get on your face and you start repenting first. God, if there's any of that in me, if there's any pride in me, start with me. Lord, I just saw usury. Lord, if there's any usury in me, before I can deal with it, I got to make sure I don't, I'm not operating in it. Before I can deal with things of the enemy, I got to make sure that I haven't, that I'm not operating in that. So, so it's just simple. Lord, I don't know, but I need you. So God, humility, Lord, keep me humble. I still say, teach me how to pray. His disciples said, teach, teach us how to pray. I still ask God, teach me how to pray. Teach me how to pray in this season. Teach me how to pray over this situation. Teach me how to pray for this one. Lele, I'm like, Lord, I've prayed so much over here. Now how do I pray for this? I don't know what to pray now. Show me. So I pray in the Spirit a lot. And then he'll show me. He'll give me a decree. He'll give me a word. So it's a place of humility. So just reach out your hands to this precious one. I felt like the Lord wanted to come back and do more. Lord, we ask for more. <laughs> Joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Daddy, what do you want to do? <sighs> the Lord's breaking disappointment. Holy and he's planting hope deep in your heart. Jesus, thank you, Lord. So over all of you, we're the army of worms, the army worms or whatever those disgusting things. I'm like, I've never heard of such a thing. Came and tried to take the seed and to devour the seed that actually is going to bring forth a mighty harvest. I release the oil of glory and the fire of God. Mighty warrior, you rise up. I release the oil of glory and the f holy fire of God to burn up every army worm, every locust, and to release to you that your vineyards 
will be flourishing, that the vines will release all the fullness, that your vats will be filled with the new wine of the Spirit, that you will have overflowing oil and your hearts will be glad. I cancel the devourer's assignment and I commission you in to being those who walk with the Spirit of the Lord to destroy the works of the enemy and with the power of his fiery love to burn up the yokes and the bondages that are that have kept captives the harvest is ripe i release to you sickles harvesting sickles and gathering tools and gathering baskets to gather the harvest fire and glory <sighs> shoo in jesus name and i bless you to be a blessing I bless you to see the fullness of his grace and glory manifest in every realm of your life. I bless you to be healers, and I bless you with healing, healed and whole and delivered, walking in the fullness of who God's called you to be. Shh. In Jesus' name. I bless you that your angels will be right with you. So don't drive down the freeway going 100 miles per hour. <laughs> bless you with wisdom. <laughs> I bless you with your angels. Just trying to lighten it up a little bit. <laughs> I just bless you in the name of Jesus. With the Father's love, with the Father's heart, with the power of the Holy Spirit filling every part of your life. That you would be blessed going in and blessed going out. That you would be a blessed to be a blessing. God wants to bless you to be a blessing. The blessing of the Lord is greater than the curse of the enemy. And because of the blood of Jesus, we are a blessed people. So I release that blessing over you in the name of Jesus and over your households. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, bless you guys. Have a great week. And uh, that was a good blessing. Amen. Just receive it. Amen. God bless you guys.